Welcome, NCLEX High Yielders. This is Dr. Zishan, and I'm the host of NCLEX High Yield Podcast, where we will be giving out daily content for your exam, tips and tricks that the boards love to ask, and overall general information on how to study, what to study, and complex topics broken down for you. Whether you're a first-time test taker or even a repeat test taker, we have helped people across the globe pass their NCLEX exam, so do not give up and get motivated. Make sure you subscribe to our podcast and also visit our Instagram at NCLEX High Yield, at NCLEX High Yield, where you can DM us questions so we can answer them on the podcast. Also, check out our website, www.nclexhighyield.com, and subscribe to receive a link to our weekly free Zoom session. Free Zoom session where I drop all types of content, break down complex topics, and make them easy for you to understand every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. See you guys then. Take care. Now let's jump into hyperthyroidism and more so thyroidectomy. As you can see right in front of us, we've got a question about thyroidectomy. We've got our pituitary. We've got our thyroid. Parathyroids. So, hyperthyroidism. Pituitary makes TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. Wait, break that down. Thyroid stimulating hormone. All right, we didn't get too fancy with this one. We called it as it is. It stimulates the thyroid, okay? And the thyroid will now produce T4 and T3. T4 converts to T3. So we're more concerned about T4 than we are T3. If we've got hyperthyroidism, that means that our thyroid is making too much T3 and T4. So what happens in hyperthyroidism? Hyperthyroidism. Oh, good. Everything becomes hyper. Thyroid controls what? Our metabolic state. So everything in our body becomes hyper. Right? Everything speeds up. Exactly. High heart rate. High blood pressure. High temperature. Diaphoresis. Diarrhea. Weight loss. Heat intolerance so on and so forth. Everything goes up. Very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. So first and foremost, what are we going to see on labs? Well, okay, sorry. Let me take a step back. I'm seeing a patient. We suspect hyperthyroidism. Select all that apply. Boom, right there. Do you understand the concept of hyperthyroidism? Then what are we going to see on labs well clearly we've got elevated t4 t3 this is called a negative feedback system when i have too much of t3 t4 my body is going to shut down the hormone that stimulates the thyroid i don't need more thyroid So don't stimulate the thyroid. I've got enough being made by the thyroid, so stop stimulating it. So what do we see on labs? Decreased TSH, increased T4, T3. So this is what we're going to see on labs. Now, what are we going to do? And the one I'm going to talk about right now because it gets really intense is I'm going to talk about thyroidectomy. So if we've got... To remove this thyroid, there's a couple of things that we're worried about. So we've got the parafollicular, or sorry, the parathyroids. The parathyroids control what? Calcium homeostasis. They control calcium homeostasis. So now, a couple of things that we're worried about with the thyroidectomy. So one is to start with the, the basic stuff, the common sense stuff. Well, if I remove the thyroid... And I am going into the neck. What am I worried about? Well, there's two of the eight that we're freaking out about. One is airway. How we compromise the airway. The second one is hemorrhage. So look for that swelling edema strider. You see that word strider? You're freaking out. If you see them drooling, that's airway, airway, airway. Look for those words. Hemorrhage, swelling around the neck. So these are the two complications that we're worried about. <clears throat> in real life, we're also worried about nicking the uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve. 
I haven't really seen that tested, but for the sake of completion, I'll talk about it in case it comes up. If we nick the recurrent laryngeal nerve, we will get that hoarse voice. So we're very, we have to be very cognizant of where that uh, nerve is. Now, let's get into the stuff that, that the boards really like. I mean, those are just the, the freaking out about. First initial priority, uh, things of that nature. So this thyroid, why are we removing it? Why are we removing this thyroid? It's got too much T4 and T3. Too much of it. Too much of it. Too much of it. This thyroid, this T3 and T4 is contained in the thyroid. It's contained in the thyroid. Now I went to go remove it and damn it, I made a nick. Guess what spills out into the body? All that T4 and T3 that already gave me all those symptoms. Now I've spilt it into the bloodstream. Crap. Now what? Thyrotoxicosis. This person's got thyroid at a toxic level. So not only do they have those symptoms, now they're amplified. Now we're scared. Now we're scared. Because this person can suffer so many different complications. Their whole body is going to be out of whack. So we have to now get rid of the thyroid, um, the T3, T4, and there's medications for that. What you want to know is how to identify this. This person just came out post-op from a thyroidectomy and now all of a sudden they've got 100.9 fever. Their heart rate is 140. Their blood pressure is like 200 over 100. This is unexpected after a thyroidectomy. Unexpected. Anytime you see something that's unexpected, you're freaking out about it. One of the eight that we're freaking out about, right? First, initial priority, most concerning, urgent, report to HCP, whatever it is, they all say the same thing. What are you freaking out about? Find one of the eight. Cool. The other thing is, is don't fall for the expected stuff, okay? Don't fall for somebody who's got bacterial pneumonia, oh, airway, and has a fever of 102.8. Well, yeah, you expect that. They've got bacterial pneumonia. Or somebody who's got COPD that's got a 90% O2 set. Well, that's expected. Or a person who has gradual loss of memory and like now all of a sudden doesn't know where they're at all the time. Yeah, that's expected. That's dementia. But hey, hold on one second. What about the person that comes in post-op, has redness around the incision site, and now has 100.4 fever, and now has got decreased blood pressure, increased heart rate? That's unexpected. They should not have a fever. They should not be showing signs of sepsis. Find one of the eight. Coming, after, coming out of a thyroidectomy, you should not have a fever. You should not have elevated blood pressure. You should not have elevated heart rate. That's unexpected. We're freaking out about that. Okay, so that's the first thing that they're going to talk about. The second thing is, and I know some of you guys had mentioned it, is we're talking about the parathyroids, right? So the parathyroids are embedded into the, the thyroid tissue. But they have a total different function. So we try to spare the parathyroids when we do a thyroidectomy. What we're worried about is we try to spare them because, again, calcium homeostasis. But sometimes we end up taking out the parathyroids. So when we take out the parathyroids, exactly, we develop hypocalcemia. Hypocalcemia. How are these going to show? Chops deck. Cheek. Tap on the cheek and watch them spasm. Just tap, tap right where the maxillary is. Boom. Just tap on it. Watch them spasm. The other one is trousseau. Trousseau sign is when we put a blood pressure cuff on and they get carpal spasms. So you put a blood pressure cuff on and then boom, their fingers start to contract. The other one is with hypocalcemia is you can see tingling around the mouth. Another sign of hypocalcemia. So... With the thyroidectomy, obviously we talked about airway, we talked about hemorrhaging, but the ones that the boards really like asking about is they like asking about the fact that we've developed thyroid storm or thyrotoxicosis, same thing, okay? And then if we take out the parathyroids in the process of a thyroidectomy, right? So let's just take a look at, like I said, the first question that popped up right here. So step number one, which action is most important to implement first? 
what are we going to do? And <laughs> you guys are like, why are you guys even attending this? You guys are good. I'm glad you guys are all here. I love doing this when I see so many people show up. I love seeing the new faces and everything. So I'm going to go through it. I know you guys are answering it, but this person just had a thyroidectomy eight hours ago. This person is anxious with what? Tingling around the mouth and muscle twitching in the right arm. Well, obviously we're worried about the parathyroids. Between calcium and ABGs, well, I'm more concerned about the calcium level. Documented, well, no, they've got something going on. Change of surgical dressing, well, they've got something going on. Let's find out what's going on with the calcium, right? Oh, here we go. So, which one of the findings is requires most immediate? So, which one are we freaking out about? Find me one of the eight. Find me one of the eight. Thyroidectomy 24 hours ago, find me one of the eight. Pain, I don't care about. Don't fall for the pain. Don't fall for the pain. Laryngeal strider, well, that's one of the eight. That's one of the eight. That's actually our number one. That's our airway. Find me one of the eight. What am I freaking out about? I don't care about your heart rate. I don't care about your calcium. Not over one of the eight that I talked about. These are the types of tick tips and trip. Zera. Tongue twister there. These are the types of tips and tricks that I offer you guys for free every week. Every week I'm offering you this. Now I'm, now I'm going to do it on a podcast. So when you know people come to us all the time, and I'm, I'm digress a little bit here while I wrap up. You guys are very welcome. You guys are very welcome. Um, I'm going to digress here a little bit. A lot of people come to us as a last resort. Why? Because we're brand new. Um, I, I mean, I've been teaching for quite some time, but I just started the company recently. And we've had, you know, people come to us as repeat test takers. Most people. I can count on one hand in my entire, entire career of teaching how many people were first time, first time test takers. Everyone else has come to me as their last resort. Some of you guys, it's absolutely your last resort. Like the last time you can take this exam before you cannot take it again. So with that said, Everyone comes from different places. Well, those places are kind of antiquated. And, and I'm not going to name any anybody else's, you know, whatever is out there, but they kind of do the same redundant thing. What we've done is we've figured out, one, I have to break down topics to patients so they can understand. They have no medical background, but I want to make sure they understand what they're doing, why they're doing it, what they have. And that's where I learned my teaching. So my boss, who's uh, the president of the medical board here in Nevada, most powerful doctor I know, he was like, man, you've got to talent. You've got a talent where you can break down complex topics into simple stuff as I've hopefully done for you guys today. And so when you're able to, to understand the content, well, now it's about the test. Well, I figured out patterns. I figured out one of eight prioritization. What are you guys laughing at? All you need is your world and Z. I already know this. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those things that, that we have Figure it out. When I say like, hey, look, if you see this answer, choose it. Find me one of the eight. If you see wash your hands, choose it. When All those tips and tricks that you see on our Instagram, those are all because I've figured out patterns in this exam. Okay? Don't talk yourself out of it. Right? If they're going to work 90 to 95% of the time, on that section, you're scoring 90 to 95%. Tell me you're not passing. Right? Use everything that we've got that's all-encompassing. And make sure that you are sticking to the method because on test day, you are not going to be able to remember or you're not going to know. So what I was saying is that make sure you use all the tips and tricks that we leave for you on Instagram. Join these free Zoom sessions. People come to us. They pass with just free Zoom sessions and you will. They spend zero dollars with me. Okay. So we do this because we truly, truly love what we do. Um, I love what I do. I love the responses when I get people that come in here and they're like, I passed or they text our Instagram or they text me. Dude, this is what it's about. We're making nurses worldwide. If I offended anybody, I apologize. Um, I don't mean to offend people. If there's any constructive criticism, if you want to see anything uh, that that you guys specifically want, hit us up on Instagram. I will try and answer them and put, put those questions either on the next Zoom session, answer them on the DMs uh, directly to you guys, or I'll put them on the podcast and answer them. I'm going to try and answer questions at the end of the podcast. And then also, if you have specific questions and you want to reach out to me directly, my Instagram is in the NCLEX High Yield Instagram bio. It's uh, at ZHoodBoy. And yeah, that is my last name, HoodBoy. So I will see you guys next week, Wednesday. Please, please, please spread the word. Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. 
I'm gonna get yelled at if I don't do this. Hold on. You already know what I gotta do. I want those cameras on. Cameras on, do not shy away. I'm doing this for you guys. You guys got to do this for me. All right, let's do this. Okay, well, my new phone is taking a little bit of time. All right, here we go. Cameras on, cameras on. Do not, do not hang up on me. All right, here we go. Another free weekly Zoom session. Man, this one was badass. If you missed this one, I'm sorry, but maybe on the podcast. Check out all these people that didn't miss it. If you were not here, what is you doing? NCLEX High Yield. Until next week, we out.